Hello everybody, it turns out that I started the stream but I forgotten actually to turn it, turn on, <laughs> so I was talking for 10 minutes into thin air, but anyway, so hi everybody, I'm in my usual British Grove uniform. <laughs> And I'm in Turkey, actually, for the second month. And I had a lot of things, a lot of things happened from my latest live stream. And every time I do a live stream, something big happens. For instance, the last time I made a live stream, the mobilization happened. So that's why I'm in Turkey. And it's not because of me, of course. <laughs> so a lot of things has happened and, of course, uh, in Turkey, I needed to apply for res residency and do all sorts of things, figure out how to pay here, open a bank account, and it made me actually to to fix my Patreon. So my Patreon now work is working. So if you wanted to support me, you can support me through the usual suspects like Pat Patreon. PayPal doesn't work right now, so only the Patreon. And also I started working on new videos. That's why I reopened my Patreon account. And out of some old school, I don't know, wanting to hold it as a secret, I won't tell you what videos I'm talking about. I'm, I, will, I will do, but I'm working on new solos because all I have here is my Squire Mini Strat. So I can only record videos that involves uh, electric guitar specifically and that's that's basically means solos so you can expect for me more live streams and solos and i also started to do more teaching and that's the most probably the most important thing for me because i had to go through all my insecurities and all sorts of psychological things and it's quite a lot of fun and especially with McNulty fans because McNulty fans are basically the best people in the world you just and discussing your favorite music with people for whom it's also a, their favorite music is just a out of this world experience really and Besides that, McNaughton fans are great. I also have some non McNaughton music fans also teaching, and that's even harder for me because in McNaughton music I, I know a lot, but with with music in general, it's uh, incredibly hard for me to teach people. But I started doing it, and you can congratulate me for that. By the way, if you want to study with me, you can approach me by email, which is down here, this one. And just write to me, like, I want to, to do something with you. It could be, I can transcribe something, I can, I can teach McNaughton songs. I can actually teach not only McNaughton songs, because I put the same amount of energy into learning all sorts of music, whether it's guitar music or non-guitar music, I I can I can teach anything and can I can teach Chad Atkins tunes, Tommy Manuel tunes, or all sorts of things. But so because it's all music, uh, I'm not only interested in 
in McLaughlin music, if you know what I mean. It's just my main vector to work towards. And so by teaching, I, of course, learn even more about these songs than before. For instance, uh, just a couple of days ago, I went through Sultans of Swing and I got asked so much about this song because in this song you really can go through every single every single lick and every single lick, every single phrase, every single note you can basically discuss it forever. So it's basically every single note is important in this arrangement and in this song. And for instance, uh, one of songs, one of songs I discuss, I discussed was a Golden Heart, which is shockingly is way harder than I thought. I thought that's a quite a simple song because it's all strumming. Turned out it's an incredibly hard song, and just that intro alone is like in, in not I, I won't say impossible to play, but it requires so much intention, so much taste, and honestly, I I think I got to actually put it in the advanced section on my website because the song is incredibly hard, and also this part where it goes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it has hard, hard rhythm, incredibly hard solo, especially the one in the middle, because the tempo is is very fast, and you also need to basically improvise the whole solo because it only has some some anchors here. And even this little line here. is extremely perplexing for people and believe it or not uh, even this little line so the whole song is incredibly hard so if even that is hard think about how Sultans of Swing is hard for people. And so it really opens my eyes because I don't really think too much about all these things. For instance, when I play Sultans of Swing, I don't think that, oh, that's hard. Or oh, that this beat in particular is hard. And I just do it. So for me, it's like... So I, I never thought about it in the teaching perspective, from the teaching perspective. perspective. So a lot of songs are way harder than, than it is. And so I'll... I'll take a look at questions. 
Bu, 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 bu. Yeah, I'm I'm teaching online obviously because but teaching online is not a problem because if you set out everything properly if you, I can hear you if you can hear me that's that's all that I really need so I don't think that teaching in person is important for when you're a beginner so when you're on the start and when you hold a guitar for the first time I think it makes more sense to to find a local teacher but when you have some experience I can hopefully try to help you progress a little bit faster I don't have discord but I have a Facebook group that's called Magnofla Songbook which is my main my main project Yes, Golden Heart is one of the one of the hard songs, but actually not only Golden Heart because you take almost any song and if you decide to go deeper and learn more about it, chances are it will turn out to be as hard as Golden Heart because there are always these levels. So for instance, you can play only a rhythm or you can play only this thing. Then you can add some embellishments and so on and then try to try to incorporate the solo. Like many people ask me mm, how I approach this thing when you play solos and rhythm at the same time. I think it all comes down to whether if you're a good rhythm player first, so it it builds up on the rhythm. So you first you you learn how to be a great rhythm player, and then on top of that you build your. So it's not vice versa. It's not like you first learn solos and then just magically can play rhythm and solos at the same time. So the rhythm is king and. Tommy Emanuel actually played rhythm for his brother for a long time and learned that way. So I, and my favorite thing is playing rhythm. If you watch my videos, I most of the time I just playing rhythm for people who can actually play. And so I'm playing the rhythm and somebody just improvises over it. about <clears throat> I'll talk about right hand in a couple of minutes when I will talk about sultans because I, I, I wanted to collect some questions about sultans of swing because it's a really big song so uh, it's bigger than life song so I need to collect some information first and then before doing something the fit So, with Sultans of Swing, there are actually a number of ways to approach it because I treat guitar playing like, like a magic trick. If you're a fan of magic, and I'm a fan of magic, you know that any magician, uh, if he performs the trick, he basically has multiple ways how to do it. So, for instance, if you figure out how some trick would work, he can he can perform that the other way and get the same result. But the thing is that it, it all, it's never one way to play something. It's, it's always 
a number of ways. For instance, this Sultan Sassoon rhythm, the basic of the of this is this. Simplest, uh, simplest rock rhythm that you can think. Bass, up, down, up. If you speed it up, it sounds almost like it's supposed to sound. D minor, C, B flat, A. But of course, the part everybody wants to learn is how to learn this unique, unique rhythm for this song, which is this. This feeling of this double double strumming, how I think about it, and I, I've seen people doing it all sorts of ways. Even uh, like I just did the double downstroke, something like this. And a lot of people play it like this, so it kind of. Uh, sort of a brush brushing the strings up that, that sort of technique brushing of strings how I call it and that certainly works and you actually can even see Mark doing it in the Guitar Stories documentary. So when he tries to play Sultans, then he's playing Sultans, he's not trying. And he played it, this thing. And of course, for for this song, I tried to figure out how he do how he's doing it. And for me, I not I'm not trying to say that it's 100 percent of how he does it, but I think it's more like this double brushing, if that's a word. So it's bass and then two fingers like that. And then the rest of this, this rhythm. So it slowly it goes bass, two upstrokes, Downstroke and upstroke, basically that. That's that's how I approach it. I, I'm not 100% sure, of course, but it's it's how I do it. And of course, if you speed it up. it becomes something like this. And it also works here. So... And it's, it's really the unique rhythm because I learned almost 100 songs from Mark and that's the first and the only time this type of rhythm actually used so it's unique in that in that way So it's again it's bass uh, index finger upstroke, middle finger upstroke, and downstroke. And the other thing is that it it's not like you need to play it every time, so it's not like this. 
so it's only get used in in certain places for instance in the very first time but then it goes the usual way double stroke so it's a combination of usual strumming and then this and honestly even if that's wrong, a wrong way to play it, I just love how it sounds. And that happens all the time with me. I'm not confident in 100% that it's like it's like it's played it's because it's a, such a big song and I'd be stupid to, to say that I'm confident 100%. But anyway, it sounds so good and so I think And it's, in, it's actually enjoyable to play. And also you can stop muting strings here in the left hand and it will sound more like in the Guitar Stories documentary I was talking about, so it's more like... And in, in reality, it's just a combination of all these things I was talking about. It's the one finger upstroke. Double, double upstroke thing. Which is my favorite. But for, for some things, I can say for sure that, that it's not something. It's not this. It's not, it's not, it, it doesn't work that way, for sure, because that way is more economical and it makes, just makes more sense. A lot of people say that it's a Spanish kind of Spanish rhythm, but it's not. It's just a just a regular rock rhythm with a spicy beat, this this spicy double double upstroke thing. What is Spanish, however, is this this thing. This is certainly a Spanish thing, it's called rasguiado or something like that. So it's like uh, one middle ring finger, then middle finger and index finger. In that sort of brushing fashion. This is for sure the, the Spanish technique. But this thing is just a regular rock, rock strumming with a Mark Knopfler twist, of course. I've, I saw a question about the picking. <laughs> Yeah, of course I wanted to I want to cover the alchemy version. However, my problem with alchemy alchemy is the live album by Dark Straits and my problem is that it's so unique and you can try to you can try to play the studio version, but the live version is just out of this world. There are guys who played it brilliantly by the way. He, there is a guy on YouTube who who's playing for two years, I think, and he does it brilliantly slow. Just Google Google up Sultan of Swing Alchemy version and it will blow your mind.
But again, I think it's how I approach it. And of course, with Sultan of Swing, my version, I only had a one week to learn it. So I'll talk about my mistakes later. But I, again, if, that, if, that, if that's the wrong way, I'm, I'm fine with it because I, I love how it sounds. So it's bass and then index upstroke and middle finger upstroke. Then downstroke and upstroke. We play this slap on two and four, usual usual slap, like in this rhythm. So really the only addition here is this double thing. Yes, this is a beautiful guitar. It's my favorite guitar ever. For I bought it for $100. It's my main X. And I actually was able to disassemble it, just unscrew these screws here and put it in my standard luggage and just travel with it. Because that's, after all, that's a travel guitar. And I'm, I'm doing that it's supposed to do, travel with it. Question. When it's C triad, yeah, that's a good question. I think what you mean is that in this part, it's the first time is just D minor. And then it's and then it's it's this F triad went out of tune a little bit. Privateering for beginners. Mm. Yeah, no, certainly not a beginner piece because that's a lot of, as I discussed in my previous live stream, it's like a chicken picking in folk song. So it's really hard to pull up, pull it off. really hard to play. Yeah, of course Sultan Sasuink is Spanish in the sense that it has a Spanish Spanish progression. Your typical progression you associate with the Spanish Spanish music, but I was talking about Speci strumming specifically and it's not that Spanish but this thing is certainly a flamenco technique this resguiado thing I really don't know it's really it's just taking it one 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 finger at a time so it's actually three finger trick so it's like again ring finger middle finger and the most important thing 
bit here is just to relax your hand. And it's just a, it's a really natural movement of a hand. And you can often see people when, when playing these sort of things. This brushing movement, windmilling your arm, is sort of, it's a very natural thing to do. And there are actually a, a piece by Spanish composer Albenis. Albenis. It's called Sevilla, I think. And the guitar player John Williams played it like this. And so he also played it with this Resgiado technique, although composer never intended that, and actually it was composed for piano, obviously, because some songs actually was composed by piano. Did you know that this song... It was actually composed for piano, but it sounds better on guitar. In the gallery, I try to play the solo, and it's it's so hard to play this in the gallery solo. It's that's obviously an intro, but I played the solo for this song, and it's so hard. And there are basically almost no videos of that, so. I, I need to check that. I check, need to check this out, and that's certainly a one candidate for my next videos. But it's so hard to play this particular solo; almost impossible. So I was I was talking about my mistakes in the my Sultans of Swing video, and of course I make a lot of mistakes all the, all the time, but. My biggest mistakes for that particular song I made at the most famous part, which is the twiddly beats. You see that I'm I'm kind of a lazy guitar player and I usually play with my three fingers. So it's in this part especially I I played it like this. So like with a ring finger and then all the rest. And that's actually a really stupid idea and that's my biggest mistake in my video because all what you're supposed to do is to actually play the top note with a little finger. Like this, and then here. But why? Because if I if you play it the lazy way, like I played it in my video, it's actually it's a bad idea because what happens here is Sometimes you can not push this first string all the way and actually play a little a little slide here. If you really slow it down, so that can happen. And so it gets something like this and it sounds really bad. If you play it this lazy way and, not, and so sometimes 
that's actually Mark also plays mostly with three fingers, but with this particular line, it's it's much better. It's a much better sound if you play it correctly by using the little finger. It just sounds better that way. And another mistake I did is here I went and I, I did a stupid thing, like I, I played something like... And I, I went down here instead of playing it like in the same position here. Like it's supposed to sound because it's way easier to make a mistake here with this wide wide hammer-ons or whatnot. And I I make I made a mistake here. I played something like something stupid like this, but it's actually how Mark played it, it's the best way to play it, and it's just to stay here. And it sounds better, and it's uh, much, uh, much easier to play, and just sounds in general. So little things like this, I always make mistakes, and I actually even regret it a little bit but I just had to rush this song so much that I, I would let some mistakes let, uh, let through ah uh, here I made it again something like this or something, but just because it's such a, a long stretch. But that's a bigger mistake, actually. Playing the twiddly beats with three fingers is a bad idea. With Without the little finger is a really bad idea. Don't do that. play like it's supposed to sound. Again, again, how I approach the Sultans of Swing rhythm is bass, then index finger upstroke, middle finger upstroke, downstroke, upstroke. something like this and of course if you speed it up suddenly start to sound good. So if something sounds stupid when played slow, it doesn't mean usually it sounds better when played, then you speed it up. Another mistake I did is you're asking about the final part of the solo and 
the arpeggio section. I, I, I think I know what you mean. So it goes like... Mm. That's that part. I honestly I don't know how to play it. Uh, I just approach it the way I thought. I thought it sounds so it's something like. And I, I in my video I played it like this. Mm. I played it like this, but for me the. The more important bit here is is this um, expressive uh, muted part. You see, I'm not that uh, that kind of a guy who tries to replicate something exactly. I just kind of get it the way I like it and just run with it. Same with the rhythm. I just play it like I I want to approach it and like I hear it in my head and just I'm not trying to study the song under the microscope or something like that. And this particular riff I just All I can say is that uh, I like uh, of this particular line. I like the sound more when played up here. Because because basically everybody plays it here. But to me, it's, this sound is kind of it's just kind of too, kind of too bright, and here, it sounds better here, I think. But arpeggio, or you for, or you were talking about about this, but anyway. The most important bit about Sultan So Swing and the main mistake people usually make with that song is not playing with enough dynamic range. Because you see, my my strength never was getting something 100% accurate or 100% like it's supposed to sound or something like that. I think my strength is just trying to capture the feeling feeling of stuff. And for instance, in Sultans in particular, what a lot of people are missing is this huge dynamic range of Mark's playing because in that particular song he goes from all the way from the beats like like this which is basically like the 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 loudest part of the song to things like And the very gentle, gentle, gentle. And my favorite line is it would be this where it goes. Mm. Uh, it's 
sounds bad for some reason, probably because I cut my finger a little bit, but but anyway. Anyway, what I mean is that this line it's almost like slapping, so it's really you can almost hear this. And then here, so it's it's putting um, a lot of energy into it. So it's not like this. It's not that kind of a usual one. How how can how I can say it? This same volume is what I mean. So it's not. It's actually putting almost something like this and that's my favorite part of the whole of the whole solo this just something like this and again my example of the sweeter part is like here a very low volume this gentle as opposed to guitar is this magical instrument where you can experiment with the sound from the placement of the hand one sound here different sound here play with the volume slap it So the the dynamic range is probably probably the most important part in this song when playing the solo of course because even though it's uh, compressed the sound is obviously compressed that dynamic range shines through and you really can hear all, all that Yeah, <coughs> I think many people play this beat, this beat. My guitar may go out of tune, so sorry about that. For some reason it's harder to tune when you're live. But usually people play it here. But I like the sound, hear the sound. I like this sound better. And it's actually, it's harder to play here, of course, because you need to go up here and also play this, this crazy thing when you sort of play all these hammer-ons again extremely wide dynamic range from the from the from the mellow tones up to this and that's actually I'm I get criticized sometimes 
is what is that I'm, I'm playing with a, almost a, an extremely hard attack is what you call but but I actually think it sounds better When you hear the jazz go down, it's that line. But there are actually countless of great lines in that song. I can open up here my written down version of it. And... I mean, that sounds, that sounds insane. And even the line as simple as this one. It's so easy to play it the boring way, I mean, something like... But if I put a lot of energy into it, it becomes it becomes this extremely tasteful and great sounding lick. Just by changing the right hand attack a little bit. And that's the, the best way you can do in that particular song. In any lick, basically in any lick. That particular line, that particular uh, moment in the song actually turned out to be the hardest part in the whole song. So you have all these solos and twiddly beats. But actually the hardest beat is this. Mm. Because it requires you, your right hand to do things you don't want to do. So, for instance, this almost double slap. So, when I was um, preparing for my video, I played it all the way through the song and I always would stumble on this part and I played something wrong and ruin the whole thing. So that's the hardest <laughs> beat for sure. Oh, and by the way, speaking of Speaking of dynamic range, I was I was thinking about the first solo when it gets to the first solo. It's it sounds and here on this arpeggio thing on this particular arpeggio thing, it's so easy to screw it up, and you do it again by playing without dynamics and I mean like this you may say there are no difference but 
compare with with that. So what I did there and I played it again with the faster attack on this particular arpeggio because all of this is just a simple A major arpeggio but you can hear on this A open A string how much energy I put into it so if you if I slow it down it sounds like so something like this And again, even here. So it's like boom, 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 boom. Is this <laughs> like this over exaggerated thing? But again, it's just putting a lot of dynamics into it. It's what I mean. I think in the record, it's actually a little bit over over sharpened sharpened something like this again this a lot of energy and you ruin it by playing like this instead of really digging into it. Like this. I think it even, on the record, it's even like distorting a little bit. <laughs> like in this dive. Again, this slapping thing. Hello. I've got some students in Paris. <laughs> I already have students from all over the world actually, including my mother Russia, <coughs> mother Russia, <laughs> but I'm, I'm in Turkey right now. How do you choose between thumb and fingers on the right hand? That's how much I charge for lesson. I, I discussed it in my previous uh, live stream when I'm, I, I haven't started teaching at that point, but now I actually teach and I charge the minimal amount, I think is $35 for one and a half hour, because I think that I'm a beginner teacher 
And so as a beginner teacher, I will, I Googled, actually Googled the, the, like the spectrum of prices for teachers for private lessons. And I think that $35 is like the lowest boundary, but I, I, I thought to go with it because I'm a beginner. And I, I, I thought about one and a half hours because it's really impossible to cramp the information in one hour because every time I, I try to start a lesson and I go for one hour, I just, after one hour mark, I think, is that it? Is what? It's already happened, so I just can't cramp all the information I want to to communicate for my student in one hour then but that's why I settled on one and a half and it's usually one and a half sometimes more rarely it's one and in one hour and 20 minutes but anyway it's 35 dollars for now I'm not plan planning to 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 charge more for now but anyway you can Again, you can approach me on this email and just ask for lessons and I'll, I'll discuss. I'm happy to do it again. I had to go through so much to enable to, to start teaching is that it's, it's really impossible for me. It was almost impossible for me to do, but at that point in life, I think it's a good opportunity for me to try to do that because again, I kind of don't have other choices, really. How I choose between thumb and fingers on right hand? That's a really good question. And that's something I, I think constantly about, actually, because then you pick out all these solos. All these great McMuffle solos, you always think about how, uh, how I can uh, how I can choose between fingers and that's that's the answer that's a question that doesn't have an answer because it the truth is this that you can play alternating with thumb and fingers so if I show you a line and it's I can play everything with my thumb or I can play everything with uh, my index finger and it just depends on the context this line from the I'll see you in my dreams is a, is a good line to showcase that because it just depends on the context of, of the particular line I'm playing. So here it's like... I kind of need this... this accent here. And again, this open string makes more sense to play it with the index finger because it would be stupid if I would go. Two, two times, hit thumb two times in a row. Because it, it makes no sense. And so... But uh, the, the difficult part about Mark's playing in particular is that if you take one of his lines mm. Mm. like this solo from
And I think I I went out of of the live broadcast. So in this particular line mm, If you change one thing here, it just crumples down like a... Like a house of cards. I think I, I went way out of tune for some reason. So the way I decide for thumb or fingers is just basically intuition and basically intuition in sometimes but not always just watching the hands but I mostly rely on on my ears so if I hear a line mm. I sort of just automatically applying my hearing. Yeah, I have a little tuner here, but it's not always it's not always perfect, so I need to retune it. And usually when I'm tuning a guitar, I tune by tune it by tu by a tuner and then just hold it like this and fine tune it because tuner is never right yeah some teachers actually charge fifty dollars a an hour and I felt a little bit uncertain about that because I be, again I'm a beginner teacher and I'm not a professional and I'm not a professional musician and I don't have a, edu a musical education and so I, it, it would be really I would be hard pressed to charge more honestly but if I'll gain, gain more knowledge and if I'll gain more experience of course I can fix it a little bit but I don't think about that for now I just think I just think about getting as much as much experience as I possibly can and of course donations are also really really important because I just really live on on that basically that's why I was pushed into this teaching because I again I don't have a choice Yeah, for Poland and uh, for countries like that, and especially Russia, thirty-five dollars is quite a, a lot of money. But for like for developed countries and not like a third wor world countries like Russia, it's for people in Russia. I charge uh, a lot. I charge like a fifteen dollars or something like that because I know because people. Um, don't have just enough money and for for developed countries I charge more For this particular solo, I think I 
every time I play it with different fingers. <laughs> It just depends on the context. Practicing tips, I don't think that I, I have any particular practicing tips except for just sticking with it and practicing just consistently. Not like you practice for eight hours one day and then just forget about it for a week and leave guitar. Just practice even five minutes a day, but every day, every single day. That's more important. And for this, for the physical things like thumb over the top or the bar thing, this bar thing, F chords. There are, there are really no shortcuts. You just need to, just need to do it. Especially this thumb or the, the top thing. Just jump over, over yourself and try to do it, and it will hurt. And this thing will hurt. Uh, when I was learning this bar thing, I, I wasn't able, I wasn't able to play it correctly for, for the, for all the strings to ring out and I actually I used to tie my hand on the fretboard and just like hold it like here in this position and sometimes I, I think I believe I even get my got my index finger bleeding at some point so I was just desperate to learn this holding this bar so it so all the strings so it's just it depends on how badly you want to learn something, but that's the ba bad practice. It's the bad practicing, and of course, uh, at that point, it's like learning to ride a bicycle. So I can always get the, all the strings sound perfectly, including this thumb over the top. Russia is a third world, world country, that if, if not the fourth world, if it's a word. I mean, you, you need to live there to, to feel it. It's a, it's a rich country and it's a beautiful country. I'm not saying that it's not, I'm, it's just, it just deserves better. And that's why I'm actually trying to to do this international thing internationally. I try to speak in, in, in English language. I'm not like... Mm, my channel is not a Russian channel, if you know what I mean. I, I speak in English and I teach to a broader audience than I could. And to be honest, I'm just a fan of English language and just it's just, it's just my... One of my favorite favorite things in the world, apart from music, so music and English language. And music is an international language, and English is an international language because native speakers in English are what just Canada, Uni United States, the UK, and and all that. But a billion billion people, apart from that, so this is the most international language, and so. I teach uh, the first, the most international language, which is music, by the second international language, which is English. So it's just, it's just like this. Yes, just practicing consistently. The other day I learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube and I figured that it just requires this every day. You don't need to sit for hours on that. You just need to learn one thing, leave it, and then return and learn another bit. 
And so I just in just do it consistently and day after day. And so it just works like that. And my my relationships with English is extremely awkward, just as my relationship with guitar, because I don't know English grammar at all. I mean, I don't know much of the music theory, and I don't know English theory. But what I do know is that with enough practice, you can go a long way. And that includes my, my approach to learning English and to learn music is basically the same. It's just very practical approach and mean that just learning as many songs as possible on guitar and for English it's the same. It's just learning as many little tricks and phrases as possible and just using it, whether it's writing or speaking, doesn't matter. Just, just using it, playing it playing songs, as many songs as possible, and learning as many words as possible. So that's the way, that's my way. Very, extremely practical approach. And I hate overthinking in music, actually, and over, yes, overthinking, I think that's the word. Just all these ridiculous steps, all these scales and whatnot, all these things. To me, that's important is really to strum a good song. Just strum a good song and the same with language. Just if people can understand me, that's the most important thing. I mean, you don't need to know a ton of English grammar in order to pull it off. Again, <laughs> somebody says the, uh, again, the rhythm for Sultans, I approach it like this, thumb, index upstroke, middle upstroke, Slap, up stroke with three fingers, and all the rest. It's basically the variation of this basic, basic rhythm. With a twist of this. Instead of one upstroke, I play two in a row. And when you speed it up, it sounds actually good. to overcome language barrier. Again, you're, you're seeing the guy who has a lot of psychological uh, problems and actually insecurities and whatnot. And for me, it's almost, it was almost impossible to overcome the language barrier. But at one point you just just forget about it and try to do it, try to do it whenever you feel ready. Oop. I unplugged my guitar. Yeah, I saw actually uh, every single Sultans of Swing cover on YouTube when I was preparing my version, of course, I had to go through all of these. And so I tried to, in this live stream, to collect all my, all the things I would try things do. And of course, a lot of people play it better than me and I'm not the 
the best one on YouTube. But my goal again is to capture the feeling more than anything else. And so I can I can do stupid things like this or this play this incorrectly or but I think to me the most important thing is to capture the feeling of of something and it it, it it's true for any of my videos. I mean, any song, for me, the mo number one priority is just to get the feeling right. And I'm not the best one at capturing the 100% accuracy of where to put your finger here. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to start any tribute bands because because I'm not a professional musician and that's that's the truth of it. Because I'm not a professional and it's even hard for me even to do my YouTube thing because I need to practice really for a long time and for for songs I record, I actually record for tens of takes sometimes and it just takes a lot of elbow, elbow grease for me and the stupid thing is that I sometimes play so much for instance I need to re-record a video because the first time I played so much that my fingers would just be crushed and sometimes until it really ble bleeds, it's bleeding Sometimes it's sometimes it gets that hard, and to get a way, to get a band going, I mean that's really impossible for me because I'm not a professional. Chuka Chukas from Telegraph Road. <laughs> I really don't know what you're talking about, and this this particular song I never tried to play this so. I never played it, so probably the other time. <laughs> yeah, all if you see a Sultan of Swing video with millions of views, obviously, in that case, people are not wrong, so it's great. So there are no Sultan of Swing video with millions of views. That's not great, basically. Every every single of that. Amazing guitar players, amazing musicians. <laughs> Triplets, you mean the twiddly beats? Yeah, in the right hand, it's simply the farm pull off. Farm again, and then an index finger. Farm, pull off, farm, index. I I actually had a one guy who said that I play it wrong because he said that I need to play it with two fingers or something like this. So here. I don't care. It sounds it sounds identical. What I what I care about is that I told I already told about it. In my video I played it the wrong way. I played it with three fingers here. And that's the really bad idea. Because you can slip your ring finger here and play a little slide here and it's a really unwanted sound you need to execute it perfectly every time and so the little finger that is the way to go here
not this lazy way but because again you can slip this slide through and it sounds bad and with little finger it sounds It sounds clean and perfect. So that's the way you do it. Yeah, sorry about the tuning. It's really hard to get the tuning right in live streams. I just try to read and play at the same time, which is a bad idea. Yeah, there are so many great videos on YouTube and so many great guitar players. I honestly think extremely bad when I, when I see all these great musicians playing. And I think, and I'm the one who needs to teach somebody and I just, it just crushes me sometimes. So many amazing musicians. But I think my, uh, the best type of advice I ever got was somebody said to me that when I was complaining, complaining about people who play all this beautiful stuff and masterfully. And I said something like that, how I can teach people when my playing is not on that level or it's not on level of this particular player or this particular player. And somebody said to me, but you can at least teach people how to get to your level. So, and that's really cleared, cleared my mind a little bit because it's true, I can at least teach people how to get to this level and that's on its in on itself it's already a tall order because I'm playing for so many years but I think I got some some really important techniques and some really important mindsets what I'm sharing with people <laughs> Yeah, exactly. With three fingers, it sounds really, really bad. And I learned it the hard way because I, when I recorded my version, I always played it like this and I just decided to go dig deeper into that and I heard that it's actually this. And it basically ruins the whole thing. And that's another thing I learned uh, a lot of times because nearly any video I record in one session, meaning I'm not re-recording it. And sometimes, almost every time, I discover many, many mistakes after each video. So I record something and then I discover that this is wrong. And so, I think about I would do it I can do it better but it's on YouTube already so I don't care so why why worry that's my motto and the words you should live by just why worry if if that's a YouTube video it's not like it's a masterpiece something in lure or something like that <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> uh, hello. Well, my guitar is a mini Stratocaster because for now for a number of reasons. First of all, because I'm in Turkey and I travel. I actually traveled with it and I I disassembled it and. Uh, put it in my luggage and just travel with it because it's so small it's a small guitar and for me it works great because I can bring it everywhere you it, it fits in any car trunk it thinks uh, you can bring it really anywhere and in uh, when you're practicing at home you can also bring it from one room to another room and it's just it's a very friendly instrument and it's very it's really small and it's it's a really small guitar and for that and but it sounds really great if i can tune it <laughs> but it sounds it sounds really great for what it is because i got what that particular guitar for 100 dollars used and for one <laughs> For one Benjamin Franklin, this is the, I think, you can't get more of a guitar for 100 bucks. And new it's something like 200, brand new and all that, but you can get that on, on used market for 100. And because I'm generally not a gear person, I'm not too much into the overly expensive guitars and all sorts of all sorts of things, and because I don't have enough money to buy that, and I can't justify just having a instrument that costs thousands of dollars. Because again, I'm not a professional musician, and this guitar is the only thing I really need. Sending to Philadelphia, yes, it's a great, it's a great song, and I just tried to learn a solo for it. I I can't remember how it went. Mm. You see, on live streams, you forget anything that you that you that you know, and <laughs> it's incredibly hard to remember anything. solo is really beautiful and lines like this and again talking about the dynamic range same thing with Sultans of Swing basically I don't know about my guitar where where whether it's in tune sounds like almost in tune I generally play finger style. Well, of course, I can play something with a pick. I'm just generally my way of playing is kind of similar to Mark playing, Mark's playing, and I actually played with my fingers on electric guitar before I even discovered Mark's music, and so I played mo mostly, I think, like the Doors. I played. All, the, all these songs and I played and only then I discovered Mark Knopfler and suddenly I found home because he's also playing with fingers and that's the that's the perfect that's why I'm 
able to actually teach his songs because I I'm happy to have a similar kind of love, love towards this finger picking. And it really comes natural to me, so it's it's not it's not like I'm jumping over my head in order to to learn and play all this. So it's very natural to me and that's why hopefully it transfers through my videos. Just the natural nature of it. Excuse the term. Favorite version of Sultans of Swing? I think my favorite version is from Royal Albert Hall in 96th version. It's the live version from the Sultans of Swing compilation, this blue blue CD. And that, that version just blows my mind. It's perfectly played, perfectly perfectly recorded, and I think that's the, the most beautiful version of Sultans ever, at least to my taste. It's uh, live in London in 1996. I think it's it was released officially some somewhere, but it's it's available everywhere. Again, I I I watched Mark live only three times in my entire life. So in 2005, in my hometown of Saint Petersburg in Russia, and. And because I was 15 years only and I couldn't attend the 2001 tour because I was just too young and I started, the first show was in, in that year and that's actually the show I first saw Mark perform and I, I, so I first realized that all these songs I he, I'm hearing, I heard elsewhere and I never, just never knew who it was. So it was my first, first contact, if you can see, if you can say that. First time I saw Mark is the first time I heard, really heard this music, believe it or not. So thanks to my dad, I, he just bought tickets and just, he said that this great guitar player is in town and you need to see him. And I still enjoy it to this day. Six, 17 years later but I started to play guitar before I went to this show and then I, w I when I saw him in 2008 on the Kill Look at Crimson, Crimson Tour I believe to 2008 and then the first time it was in 2019 19, on the latest tour and it was in Lisbon, Portugal. So only three times and it's, it's again, it's crazy uh, because I'm not that kind of a fan to just go to hundreds of shows or buy hundreds of CDs and signature guitars. I'm just, I'm just enjoying show. I'm just enjoying music, enjoying songs and I'm not trying to this to overdrive myself i don't how i don't know how to say it but just three shows not many cds to be honest i never met mark and i never had any signatures and never wanted to have any signatures or something like that i'm just into really into music and that's really what is what's important to me the music the great uh, solos and i think that's what i care about but the funny thing is that i know a lot of people who met who actually met mark and of course, all these stories, almost every every single guy I I'm co co I'm contacting with, he, he is either met Mark or something like that. So all these stories, like meeting him and all sorts, of, it's it's so it's so much fun 
to actually and that's why I love teaching because you can hear all these stories the bands stay in tune is, is a problem but on this particular guitar I changed the tuners to these um, I can't remember it's graph tech tuners because I, what I wanted to do is to have a simple installation so I could take out the older tun tuners and just replace it with new ones and so I, I, I never even had to drill something I just but original tuners on this particular instrument are really bad it's a, it's a they are really bad tuners, so you need to replace those. And that's uh, that's all that I replaced on that guitar, just tuners. And it holds tune actually really, really well, but it's just a little bit cold in this room right now, and so the tuning fluctuates a little bit, so it's... But it's usually not a problem. I mean, you saw my videos and if you really need to this guitar to sound nice, you can get it. Yeah, a lot of songs I need to approach, but I just don't know how I can do it in this particular situation. Mm, having only one guitar, that's why I'm working on solos more for that time. Now, of course, if you have a bad tuners, you, I mean, they can't hold the string here in place and it just goes a little bit out of its holding post and so it just can't hold the string properly, so it affects it even even this bridge affects the tuning stability so i might probably need to replace this as well but i only replace the tuners and the tuners is the the main culprit if you if your guitar goes out of tune the next one is probably the nut and i lubricate the nut always when i change strings i put a little bit of how it's called uh, I can't remember the name of the product, but just graphite or something like that, or just just some kind of a lubricant for this this nut on the guitar. And some people even lubricate this bridge. And so the staying in tune is my main my main problem, I, I'd say, because I tune all the time. Yeah, I, I actually listen to a ton of music and you can actually find my part of my music collection on Spotify. I think this link is everywhere. I believe it's on my channel section in the about section. There are link in the Spotify. And I I can say I listen to hundreds of songs for thousands of songs and that's one of the ways you can actually progress as a musician just listening to everything every genre a, a, any songs just as, as much as you can Glenn Campbell is actually very very great and I always watch a ton of interviews I watched every interview of Tommy Emanuel I watched every interview of Chad Atkins, I watched every interview of Mark, I watched, I just, I'm just really into music and I, I learned so much, I read books about music, I learned the Django Reinhardt bi biography at some point and just love to 
be in that in that music despite the fact that I'm not a professional I just I'm just into it and you can say by my channel that I just love to communicate this love for music My, my favorite story about Glenn Campbell is actually when he was recording with Frank Sinatra in the UK. The song, uh, his famous, his the most, most famous song, the um, Strangers in the Night, the rhythm guitar player is actually Glenn Campbell there. And he, it's on YouTube, he, just, he talks about recording with Frank Sinatra, it's a lot of fun. And my favorite song by Clint Campbell is, again, you can find it on my Spotify playlist, it's how it sounds. There's no place like home. That's a great song, amazing song. No place like home. No, it's like a more Christmassy song, but it's so beautiful. One of my favorite songs. Did you know that Chet Atkins actually plays beautiful banjo and you can again check out that on YouTube and he plays a little bit of banjo. He even played a little bit of violin as well. He's really a... he's a genius. He plays and he played violin better than I play guitar. Chet Atkins, I mean. And you can sometimes discover that some, let's say, Birelli Lagren, I think he plays on any, on everything. He also plays on violin, on guitars, and on multiple instruments. I'm also into jazz very much. So Richard Bennett is a great guitar player. Squisto, yes. Uh, Squisito by Richard Bennett. That's actually. The thing I tried to to learn at one point, and that's of course extremely hard to play. But with Richard Bennett, I think I, I wish I could play play it properly. But his playing is so great. I mean, all, all this stuff is just just. It, you pick any line. Mm. I mean, I tried to play it, but... <laughs> His lines are very singable and I actually have this song transcribed, so... I transcribe a lot of stuff. And so I always transcribe something, even, even if I can't play something, I just transcribe it just to to train my ears, basically. And I learned quite a lot of Richard Bennett, actually. And I learned quite a lot of Tommy Emanuel tunes, too. I often, when I pick up guitar, I play a Tommy Emanuel's version of... Mm -hmm. 
I just can't play it right now because my fingers are extremely worn worn out at this point. So I often play che Tommy Emanuel's version of Jingle Bells. That's really great. Yeah, Vice City is my favorite GTA because I spent a lot of time playing. I am at that age that I play a lot of video game and I actually have, have a list of 50 of my favorite video game soundtracks and basically uh, I'm so in love with music that I basically picked out video games judging by their respective soundtracks so if the game has great music I mean I'm I'm there I transcribed everything and I transcribed from the day one I picked up the guitar. I remember to this day when I barely knew how to play, I tried to transcribe the Shadows music, for instance, Chattanooga Choo Choo, I tried to play, to transcribe that because Shadows is a great, song, great music to transcribe, transcribe because it's simple melodies. But still, even though it's a simple melody, it's incredibly hard to play, but it's great to transcribe something like the shadows. Chattanooga Choo Choo. It's... I don't know how it went, but I I transcribed little little songs like this, and I transcribe all the time. If I hear a song that I like, it doesn't matter what the instrument is, what it's an or it can be an or orchestra, or it can be a solo piano piece, or it can be it can be anything really. I just my initial reaction is usually is just to go take a guitar and try to play it and with guitar songs it's especially it's especially right urge for me just try to play it and just try try to learn it i usually transcribe with just guitar pro and i used guitar pro from i think version 4 or something like that is just ridiculous for how long I, I use that piece of software and right now it's Guitar Pro 8 I think but it's probably the best tool for and on ultimateguitar.com which is Russian site by the way it's based in Kaliningrad so I registered there in 2006 so for a really long time and so I'm transcribing for more than 15 years already. And of course, Mafia is in my list of best soundtracks indeed. I even know a one professional gypsy jazz guitar player in Russia who is who also started to play gypsy jazz because of this particular video game. So Video games are really influential when it comes to the comes to music. And again I have a list of 50 songs with my 50 video games with my favorite soundtracks. No, I I was born not to in the day where computers already were everywhere, so I, I'm only used computer to transcribe. I never written, I actually forgotten how to write with my hands because I never, I never write with my hands. So I just use a computer all the time. Mm. 
Yes, I'm actually. Uh, I love tablatures. It's the true that most of the tablatures are really bad, but my view is that tablature is. Long story short, establisher is a shortcut. So if you want to learn the song quickly, you if you need to get there, if you need to get somewhere quickly, you use shortcuts. And guitar establisher is a shortcut basically to get somewhere fast. So if you really need to to learn something fast, you use establishers. But it's a shortcut, and if you use a shortcut, you can enjoy the views and stuff like that so you lose something but another in the other hand you gain something that you can learn as many songs as possible again so i love tablatures and i love writing my own tablatures because it makes more sense than you're writing down something that you can play and you know how to play because you can go back later to that so, but I, I put a lot of effort in my tablatures, so just, just people can use it. So I almost lose my, <laughs> my voice already, so I need to, to shut it down, unfortunately, but two hours is already demanding. But my first live stream, I actually went for three hours straight and that's really great. The, the main trouble with tablatures is that there are only one way you can write something down. For instance, if the line or if the song has some variations, you can't really put that on the paper because there is only one version, so you can it has this limitation and it has its limitations in general, but I know what you're talking about is that they're not wrong in the sense of that it, it don't have any essential variations, but in general. And I can tell you that my early transcriptions and my early guitar profiles are awful. It just is as bad as any tablature you can find, basically. But just by persevering and just trying to to learn as many songs as possible and just keep keeping playing keeping learning and keeping trying to learn as many songs as possible i just got to the point when i somehow confident about what i'm playing and what i'm writing down in tablatures so it's a long way it's a really long way but again, it's just perseverance, how we can call it, and just sticking with it, this, this instrument, this magnificent instrument, which is guitar. And I can get enough of it. That's which, this is a problem. I can't really play a song because I don't know uh, any songs like entirely because I'm not a musician, so I can't play it, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm not an improvised type of a guy, so if you ask me to play something in this when I met a viewer in Istanbul it was just ridiculous because I I haven't played for a month or something like that or even for two months and I just couldn't get I, I couldn't play anything you see because it's not it's not like I I'm a super musician a super professional musician if I want something to sound good and to learn something I can surely do that, and I learned uh, many full songs in my lifetime, but it's just not my thing. My thing is just enjoy the instrument, enjoy the little bits here and there, and so, and of course, teach it.
Yeah, 5.15 a.m. is <laughs> is my favorite song ever, really. what I do, love doing the most, just strumming in the way, good songs. song has one of the best endings. I know I played it song before but it, it goes like We gather around the glass Tough hewers and butter Child childers and butter Yeah, the capo is, is your friend, really. Mark's music and capo are the best friends. <laughs> so I think that's it. And thank you for watching. Thank you for your questions. And I hope that was interesting. Again, yes, Long Highway is an is incredible piece as well. Any Mark songs. You pick any song, it is great, it's a masterpiece. Whew. So, thank you. If you want some lessons, you can approach me by this email here. If you, can, if you want to support me, you can go there as well, uh, here. And you have a Patreon here and loads of ways you can support me. It really helps. So, thank you.